Welcome to episode number 29 of the Uncle Jimmy and Cousin Donnie show. Uh, tonight's guests are Steve Messina and our boy Steve Roos is the owner of our bar for our business section. So I hope everyone had a awesome new year and a great Christmas. Um, I'm very excited for tonight's show. I think it's going to be also pretty incredible just from the standpoint of uh, we have a veteran on the show. Matter of fact, two veterans that have been around the game of softball for quite some time. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and bring Donnie on now. Mr. Donnie Rollins. Looks like he froze. Oh, there he is. You Mr. Donnie Rollins, how are you? <laughs> you combed your hair for tonight, Jim. Dude, I, I was trying to get a bigger fro than you. You look like a meal tonight. It's good. Dude, I, I, I'm supporting my BMO gear. Okay. I you, work, you have a work thing today. I worked hard today. I uh, <laughs> was with a couple customers this afternoon and uh, took some, you know, opportunities out to get some new business. As many of you know, I'm in the commercial world. So what does that, what does that, uh, what does that look like for you when, you when you say bring some new customers out? What, what does that mean? Uh, just, you know, try to bring them into the bank, give them an opportunity to meet me as a person and then just who they're going to be working with moving forward. So. Oh. Wondering, like, you bring them somewhere cool so they can, like... Usually it's dinners, uh, you know, Bulls games, Hawks games, uh, you know, whatever floats their boat. I mean, I've been to... I've been as far as Lambeau Field for a game for a client. I've been to many of random places, but uh, most of the time it's it's pretty good, so... Medieval times. Medieval times. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe Disney on ice. <laughs> <laughs> That would be sick. Two grown men going to Disney on ice. Hey, look at this. There you go. A little, for our softball show, i got to represent Forest Park. I think and I have... then I just saw I saw Johnny Doss getting on right now. So <clears> Welcome, <throat> Johnny yeah. Doss. How are you, sir? Well, I guess mine's not up here. I have the same thing. It's usually close to and, my uh, – usually close to my – You know, I told, and I told you we were at the Hall of Fame a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you can see that right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Look at that. The Uncle Jimmy and Cousin Donnie show. There? We made the page, bro. We're right against, we're right above our boy Anthony Spaghetti from Chicago Dynasty. That's big time. So that's big time. Yeah. My my mom got me this candle with the big Lebowski on it. So that, that was next <laughs> to my computer. Oh really? Does that make you feel better? About yourself? It, it smells, smells like a white oh. Russian. Oh, nice. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. So how was your how was your holiday? How was your nice. uh, Christmas? Your New Year? It was good. Um, kind of, kind of laid low. We didn't go like, and you know, to the big party scene this year, uh, which is nice. You don't have to spend a million dollars. Just went out and hung with the fam a little bit. Yeah. Christmas, New Year's was good, nice and chill. And then we we did some stuff on New Year's Day. How about yourself? How about the the little ones? Uh, the little ones actually were at the my in laws all weekend, which was uh, incredible because we got a day to ourselves with our kids. Love my kids and all, but it's always nice to have one day uh, without them. And then we, we actually enjoyed uh, a beautiful wedding on New Year's night. So congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Cabral. Uh, it was an incredible wedding. And uh, it was always fun to hang out with some people that you just kind of don't get to hang out with a ton. Uh, and it was just it was a great wedding all in all. The DJ was awesome. The food was good. The did, hall was cool. Did you shake so, the leg or what? Oh, dude, I was out, out there did dancing. You, dancing. Did you get that? Yeah, I was out there a little bit. Get, you know, it just depends on the mood yeah. I'm in, you know. Yeah. Yeah, how many drinks are flowing? I Really quick, before we get into uh, Steve Messina, I wanted to give a shout-out to some people that just jumped onto the show. Jim, we got uh, uh, James Sheldon, my realtor, jumped on to watch the show. He's, got, uh, John he's probably a happy man. He already took 5% of your <laughs> money, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. That's for you and him to discuss. I don't want to get into numbers, but awesome. John, John Ryan Doss, Mickey Balestri, Drew Rimschneider. Uh, I'm sorry, Raymond Schneider, Reston Miranda, Richard Wagner. Uh, Big Phil is watching. What's up, Phil? And then we got Jim Macy listening from his new home in New Orleans. After he sold you a house, he was able to buy a new home in New Orleans. Look at that. Oh, that's a, diff that's a different guy. Different oh, okay. Guy. <laughs> but if you need a house, Beautiful. James, you know, he – he maybe take a little less commission if he's a buddy of yours. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Did you say uh, welcome to F Phil McHugh? Yes. Uh, 
Welcome to Jim Macy, as you mentioned. Welcome to Preston. Jake Reynolds. Yep. I don't know if you see Drew. Adam Cumbie. John, Mickey, Ryan Doss. So a lot of people jumping on already, which is awesome to see. Yep. Uh, uh, big, big announcement for tomorrow. We got a little scrimmage game between the uh, signature softball team and Hex out at the Moretti Dome. Oh. And if I'm not mistaken, Adam Cumbie will be there to do a little live stream. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, he reached out, so I, I wanted to put this beat down on live stream that I'm going to hopefully – are you pitching? Uh, yeah, I think I think, I think we'll, we'll – kind of like we did last time. Okay, uh, hopefully Robbie shows up for us so we can rotate too. Right? Yeah. So that way when you're not on the field, I can talk shit to you. It's great. <laughs> so we can do like a – oh, well, you know, we can we, – we'll I got I to gotta stay competitive when we're on the field. Yeah. I can't uh -huh. be friendly anymore. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make it fun. Let's just hope that you're wearing a hex a hex shirt <laughs> come next Tuesday. Right, that, that, that's the bet. That's All fine. Right. All right. All right, man. All right, man. Well, uh, it's nine oh six now. Anything yeah. else you want to chat about before I bring on Steve? Uh, oh, Tom, what are you excited about with Steve before we get on? Um, so I just kind of got close with Steve over the last probably year or so. Yeah. Uh, out that he was he was a big golfer. Yeah. And him and his dad and, and I think his uncle's a golfer too. So they started to come in to see me at work. Uh, I work in the golf industry. I fit people for golf clubs. And one day Steve talked to me at the field. He's like, hey, I need a driver. And I was like, all right, no problem. Like, I'll fit you for a driver, no problem. Yeah. Loved it. Got himself a PXG driver. And now his dad has PXG clubs. And his uncle has PXG clubs. Really? And Steve has a bunch of PXG. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've kind of grown as friends through, like, the golf industry and – it's cool to see him in the store just kind of BS and talking softball. And, and now it's kind of grown into a little bit better friendship, which is cool. And, you know, got to know his wife at No Gloves. And um, well, I like Steve. Steve's a good guy. He's been around the game a long time. Yeah, for sure. So I, I'm excited about that. I got some questions I want to ask him about some of the old timers and some of the things that we yeah. talked offline about. But uh, at the same time, before I get to Steve, I do want to mention to people uh, about the tournament. Uh, I'm still – the deadline is Friday. I'm still at nine teams. I know the holidays were around. It kind of mixed everything up. I really would like to get the 12 teams. So I'm going to be reaching out to all the teams tomorrow just to kind of make sure I got a final count. And then Friday I'm going to have everyone pay uh, and give them probably through the weekend, maybe till Sunday night. And then that way I could start – we'll be able to start next week or, the, you know, in the tournament. So – as long as all, all goes well, um, I'll have a good update by Friday. And who knows, you and I might be going live, call it next Sunday, or maybe we'll just do it on our show Tuesday night uh, in regards to who plays. But preferably I'd like to give a little bit more of a notice. So if I do start a week from Wednesday, which is tomorrow, in the tournament, uh, I would like to let those people know about at least Sunday night. So maybe yeah. you and I will go live Sunday night and do a quick little – round robin draw like we did the last time with the whole little spinner i yep. think that worked out awesome and uh we can go from there but so please get the word out we're looking for 12 teams uh, i am going to have a rule that if a b team does sign up for the tournament i'm going to let them use gloves if they choose to to play against some of the major teams just to give it a little more of an even playing field uh, i think it's just something cool something different right i don't think it's ever been done before so and if they elect not to play yeah. with gloves, that's on them. Yeah. But I'm giving them that option, which will, I think, help them more defensively. So, I think you'd probably be surprised. Most B teams won't play with gloves just to Correct. to see back up with the competition, which is awesome. I, I would like to see that, right? Yeah. But you know, if they do feel even if they're missing guys, they don't have the full squad out there. Maybe take advantage of that for sure. It gives them the option, and and this way, at least they, you know, I feel like. I'm not saying a B team can't beat a major or an A team, but more nine out of ten times it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, this might help them out a little bit and maybe get them in a tournament where they, you know, they're guaranteed three to four games. So, uh, and it's over a course of a couple of weeks, and we'll we'll talk more about that later. So, before we bring on um, Steve here, we've got one more minute. Why don't you give a shout out? I see Moji jumping on. I see Eki jumping on. Mark Benizzi, my boy, Mr. Kimmer. Yep. So, Brad, my other boy, Robbie Gazzano, Selman. Yep. So, William Tommy Ruff. Strino, what's up, boys? How are you? Del Dylan's on there. I see him. So, Adam's on there. I uh, want to give a shout-out to Eric Mandarino and uh, 
Matt Martin, I was with those guys today. They're both going to be watching the show. So, uh, Eric said he watches the show on the way to work in the morning. Uh, uh -oh. So, you know, get through your morning commute with, with Uncle Jimmy and Cousin Don. <laughs> That's awesome. So, are you ready for Steve? Yeah. Let's go get him on. Do it to him. Uh, hey, Greg, the most handsome guy in softball is on the stream right now. Greg Fleming. Oh, uh, really? No, 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 I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it. No. Greg, hey, how are you? Hi. Greg questions me sometimes, so I gotta, I gotta make I sure see I. My stay. aunt Lisa just jumped on the stream, so she's watching from her lovely home in probably Westmont. So, welcome. There you go. I'm trying to add Steve right now. It's saying okay. adding. So hopefully, hopefully this works on the first try. Usually it never does. Nope. Mark Menizzi says New Year, same good hair. He's probably talking about me, but I would say you. Dude, my hair looks incredible tonight. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's he's talking about your hair. <laughs> uh i don't know i think steve you gotta like approve it or when i, when I add him on the show he's got to. does he have to do anything or does he normally just pop right up uh yeah he's got to approve with audio and video uh is, is you see moji's comment is jimmy gonna talk about his six and oh this week no nah, moj because i went oh and six about four different times this year <laughs> six and oh uh, so, no nah, so we're in a six and old pool oh here's our there boy steve there he is. There it is. What's going What's on, up, my boy? man? Look at, dude. You like that? You look, you look like me? Blippy, my man. Me? Yeah, with the glasses yeah. and all, dude. You're I'm rocking, getting fucking man. old, man. I lost them. It's I can't see anymore. Oh. Oh, I got to quit softball. Beautiful. Steve, What's going on, Steve? Hey. Thanks for having me on. How have you been, my man? What's Good. new? Just working a lot. Uh, enjoying. Didn't really do anything for the new year. How about you guys? We're good. How was, how was work on the New Year? Pretty busy? Or? I was off. Oh, nice. I was off New Year's and Christmas this year, so it worked out well. There you go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So one thing, you know, Steve, that we first off want to thank you for joining the show. I know Donnie and I are very good looking, so you kind of bring that level down a little bit. Yeah. But that's okay. I bring the show down. Uh, that's okay. You just that's need all right, mic. though. We we still love you. We still appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You know what? I, I, I'm going to jump right in because I know we got a, a ton of questions, and I know we we try to keep the interviews a little shorter, even though we run into a lot of good topics <laughs> and a lot of good laughs as we do this, so it, it tends to get longer. Tell people that are watching because, you know, there's a lot of people in softball that might not know you or people that do know you, but so why don't you tell us a little bit about your how you started softball, how you got into the game, why you chose to play 16 in softball and, and just kind of go into, you know, a little bit about your past. So I started playing with Chris Guerin. Uh, we started in a 14 inch league in Oak Park playing for our work and uh, kind of trickled into 12 inch. And then the, the travel for 12 inch, when you're at such a lower level, we were playing D I think at the time, you got to travel Crystal Lake and Juliet every weekend, if not further. So it was just, it, just kind of got monotonous, you know, traveling, right. spending the whole weekend. And then we weren't doing that good. You know, you're playing against guys. You get one home run a game. And if you hit one after that, it's an out. So um, it got a little boring. So Garen was like, hey, let's try 16-inch. So right. we started actually playing in the Dome in Schaumburg when they used to play back then with uh, the Windy City guys with Sal. Because Sal knew my boss, and that's how we kind of got started. So then uh, we joined Twist with the Scala brothers and uh, Sonny Manzo. And uh, after the year was over, we had a pretty good year. We put, in a, put up a third at Westchester. Uh, we ended up losing to the 45s and Windy City. So after the season, Garen said, what do you want to do? Flash wants to talk to us. And, uh, they probably wanted him more than me um in windy city and i said well i don't really know the flash guys that well because i didn't at the time i said let's just go play for windy city right and that's how i got it. that's how we got on there and it worked out great i loved it so what uh when when you were playing for windy city did you do you have a, you have a no gloves right you want to no gloves with them yeah i want to win okay city, yeah. what year was that that was the year before Dynasty won. So I want to say it's either 2013 or 2014. So after Windy City, you went to play with Dynasty. No, right 2013. 2013. 
because which well, I'm sure we'll get into, uh, we actually won Yuma that year and Nationals. So we had Yuma, Nationals, and, uh, and uh, Four Spark all in one year. It was me, Josh, Timmy, and Duff were the only ones to, to win all three in the same year, which we thought was pretty cool. Well, that's cool. That, uh, which, which one of those guys ended up being like your – your favorite teammate? Do you do you recall a favorite teammate from those olden days, or or do you have one now that you want to talk about? I mean, Joey Caputo goes down as you know top for me. Um, when I first started, we were both outfielders. At that time, I was playing right field; he was playing left. And Joey's one of the best left fielders I've ever seen, if not the best I've ever seen. Uh, and I got to play with Brian Sherwin too. So, yeah, defensively, both those guys would run run through a brick wall for you. Um, and it actually hurt them more than it helped them sometimes because Joey took some bangs out there. I mean, I think he tore his labrum twice. Wow. Uh, but he caught everything that went Didn't, he, didn't he run into the fence one year at Mount Prospect? He, or was he it, ran into the fence probably once uh, a week. I was going to say, because I, I remember him getting hurt. Didn't, didn't he get, like, seriously hurt No, that, at Mount Prospect? That was, that was Petey. Oh, you're right. It was Petey, yeah. you're right. That was, that was, that was, that was nasty. Yeah, that was, was really bad. Yeah. Joey, uh, Jimmy, were you on the crush team? No. 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 Okay. So Joey got hurt really bad in uh, Marshalltown in the one year. That was when uh, uh, Charlie Brown kicked the bench and it was he thought it would move and it didn't. It oh. was cemented in. And he almost shattered his oh. leg when Garen kicked him off second. We ended up losing that game. But Joey dove for a ball and, uh, and tore his labrum. Bad. That was the first time. Yeah. Wow. So. We, uh, you, talked, you talked about Forest Park. Uh, you know, you guys won it in 13. Who was the team that won it in 2015 when you got carried off the field, Steve? Just curious. Uh, here we go. Okay. I think it was OBI. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, I was sitting that, on the bench that's for that. For my, that's for all my OBI out. guys out there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just want to make sure what do you mean? we threw that out there. What do you mean carried off the field? Did you get hurt? Yeah, my boy Chuck hit a ball to left field, and he missed it, and he thought – he would be better off for him to get carried off the field hurt. Yeah, I didn't get carried off. <laughs> we're not. We're not gonna. I, I didn't think we were gonna get into. That. <laughs> That's, That's all right. A, I just. I had. A, I deal. I, I deal with it all the time from Josh and everyone. So what's. what's I hear you. I, I had to throw that out there for you. That's for all my OBI guys. So. Steve, but uh, Jimmy, Jimmy always finds a way to bring up the worst in people. That's yeah, not just even, the worst. That's not even my worst one. I'm sure we're gonna get to it. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna get to that. That's next on the list. So, <laughs> I've had a lot of uh, stories. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that really, kind of really. leads me into my next question, yeah. right? So before yeah. I give it over to Donnie, Sorry. you mentioned in the same year you won Forest Park and Yuma. So my question to you then, really quick, is when you went to Yuma that year, I know Timmy, I think touched a little bit about the story, but give us the full story on how and what you guys did before you actually played the tournament in Yuma that Okay, year. so this was 2016. This wasn't the year, the first year we won. This oh. was the second time. Okay. Uh, we went out, we'd always go out Friday night, and if I don't know, you guys probably haven't been to Yuma, but yeah. people have been out there. By the I hotel, go, I've, like, I've been the last oh. two years, actually. Okay, it's awesome, yeah. right? It's, so, it's good time. Uh, the hotel we stayed at had the, like the strip mall right there, and we'd always go to the bar that was there. There was a few bars there, <clears throat> and one one of our guys, I don't know if I should name names, but he loves strip clubs. Yes. Yeah. Jim probably knows who it is. Yeah. Um, so we decided that we were going to go to the strip club. So as we walked out of the bar, we're walking to the car, and I turned and saw the there was a tattoo shop right next to the bar. So I said, oh, we should all get tattoos. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That, that's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it sounded good though. No, I did say it. And then Josh goes, "Okay, let's get tattoos." And I go, "If we get tattoos, I'll pay for them." That's what it was. Yeah. So we walked in. We said, "How much for five more <laughs> tattoos?" And he goes, "What are you talking about?" And one of us had the shirt on, so we showed him the shirt. And he goes, "Oh, I could do that. Two hundred bucks." I was like, "Done." <laughs> Hit the ATM, gave the guy two hundred bucks. <laughs> now that's not the best part of the story. The best part of the story is, is that I think I was third in line because Timmy wanted to go first. <laughs> and uh or last uh, i can't really remember the order but i was not, i was like second or third because i wanted to make sure that someone got it but then i wasn't gonna be the best one. <laughs> so i get back back to the room the next day everyone's like snapchatting us and shit yeah, yeah. Our tattoos i wake up i'm it's my first tattoo so 
I was in extreme pain. So someone Snapchat, and well, I'm pretty sure Spaghetti saw the Snapchat and said he only has three stars because we have the Chicago flag in there. Yeah, yeah. So I had to go back the next day sober <laughs> and get the th the fourth star put on. <laughs> The only, oh, thing, the only good bro. thing about this is that I have it on my back because I was like, I don't want anyone to see it. If, the only time they'll see it is if I have my shirt off, which is rare these days. <laughs> but I mean, Eric got it on the middle, <laughs> like here on his bicep. Yeah. Rick, Ricky Arico got it on his rib cage over <laughs> here. Josh and Timmy, they could have got it wherever because they're tatted up anyway, so you could barely yeah. see it. Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and we put, uh, the idiots that we are, we put Moist 16 underneath it. And the tournament hadn't even started yet. <laughs> so, so Timmy goes to me, because me, me and Timmy always room together. Uh, Timmy's like, I'm going to play harder than I've ever fucking played before in my entire life. Like, we can't go home with like a second place now. <laughs> Moist 16 on our back. But yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't the best moment, but... Did you get where, it? So where, where is the tattoo on? Is it on your back? It's like my upper, yeah, like my shoulder. Oh, you, well, dude, let's see it. No. It ain't happening. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was good. Yeah, you guys, Steve, did you I'll guys win? A lot, but I ain't doing that. Yeah, we ended up okay. winning it that year, so we've won it twice. Yeah, they won it. And wow. we did it with no gloves. And that was back. There was, uh, I think Jibs was the only one that wore a glove because he was pitching and you can't step off the rubber. Mm. Um, but everyone else had no gloves for both of them. Yeah. We had some good teams that we brought out there. And it was fun, man. It was, it was next to Forest Park to me. It, the atmosphere is wild out there. Yeah. Now they brought we it back the to. Sanguinetti. Yeah, we went the last two years. two years. We went uh, for the 50th anniversary. It was awesome. Yeah. With Slap the Tickle. We wanted to have like a fireworks oh, yeah. show and the park was just jam-packed, man. Yeah, everyone it was friendly, really man. If you ever get Josh on here, you got to ask him about uh, his buddy from the pool. Just yeah. remember that if, if you ever get Josh I'll, on here. For sure. For sure. Jimmy, Jimmy it's a good story, that. too. <laughs> We've had, so, we had a, lot, a lot of good stories out there. Some of them are we can't tell. Him, <laughs> we'll get we'll get Timmy back on. He'll tell us any story. I don't yeah, know. he Timmy, might keep Timmy, just a few of those. He might keep a few of them to himself. <laughs> yeah, he wants uh, to tell everyone's story. That kid. <laughs> we had a quick question from the audience for Steve. My memory is failing me. This is from Dylan Ryan. Who ended up knocking out Dynasty in 2017? No gloves. I'm not going to even entertain that idiot. <laughs> he, if he wants, he could come on the show, or he could type it in the chat. <laughs> Every time I see him now. <laughs> he did just get married, though, so yeah, congratulations. He did. he did. He did. Dylan did. Yes. But he's a smart ass. He's always I'm... been, since he was like five years old, man. <laughs> That's funny. Congrats on ending your life. Thank you. Nice work. <laughs> uh, Donnie, do you have any questions I, before yeah. I continue on? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, Steve, you've been playing a while. Um, you know, last couple of years with Dynasty, it seems like, Every year, it's like Dynasty's last season. I feel like every off-season rumor is Dynasty's done. These players are going to go all over the place. This year, we saw two guys, you know, leave the team in, in Sherwin and, and Alonji. What's the what's the kind of attitude with that team right now with those guys? I know you picked up a couple guys with Lan Weir. Um, I think a couple more guys, too, like Vince Finelli. And uh, Billy Steiner coming on over. I apologize if I missed anyone else, but what's the energy like for that team right now? It's actually really good. I mean, we haven't talked a lot uh, lately just because Dynasty's always been a team that um, we kind of shut down as far as softball talk goes from, like, yeah. November to, like, January, end of January, February, just because, you know, families and stuff. Yeah. So, um, but it's good. I mean, I mean, we're all still friends. That was the thing about Dynasty was – and. That's why when it's all said and done for me, which is getting closer, um, Dynasty is still the team that I'm so glad I went to, and I'll never say that any other team was as good as that team. To me, as far as friendships, friendship goes and competitiveness. I mean, we were good. We were good for a while, and yeah. we ran into a tough 45 team, you know, three years in a row. But um, everything sounds – yeah, everything's good. We're just getting older. A lot yeah. of our guys are, you know, old. Garen moved up to Wisconsin, so it's tough for him to make yeah. it. Um, with my new schedule with work, uh, I, don't, I don't know how much I'll be there. And then, yeah, losing guys like that. I mean, that was the heart of our team. Alonji, Sherwin. Biggie. 
Joey last year. Yeah, it was it's huge. And yeah. three of our best players too. Mm-hmm. But we picked up. I mean, I I haven't played with Jack that much, but I know Billy mm-hmm. and I know Finelli, and they're both solid. So yeah, Jack's a beast. They're not going to hurt us at all. Jack is a beast. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard about. Yeah. The good the good thing about Jack is he shows up to everything, and I think that's yeah. one of Dynasty's problems. You guys just don't have a full squad all the time. Yeah, and that's what and that's honestly what you need. And so does Steiner. I mean, I don't know what his schedule is like nowadays, but I know when I played with Steiner, he was he was at ninety five percent of the games, and he could rake. Yeah, he hit. Yeah, he could still hit, man. So uh, you know, it's just a matter of. Uh, I think you guys got to show up to the field, and I think good things will happen. And and Jack is, I think, you know, he's awesome too. Like Finale, I mean, Finale's awesome. You know, I, I like Finale. I play college baseball with Finale, so he's he's a good dude, and and he can hit too. So, you know, I'm I'm happy for him coming back after he what he went through and stuff. So that's awesome, you know. Yeah, I mean, Dynasty is a team that um, that no one, you know, when they, when they won, no one ever believed that a team like that could win. A team yeah. of just all friends that just got together and just slowly built up. I mean, we over the years we really haven't added that much, yeah. and uh, yeah. we've added like a piece here and there, but we've we've never had like a full team. We always, you know, stuck together. We always hung out after the games, which is the for me the difference. And I don't know if you're going to get to this. The difference between when I first started and when I'm right like right now. Yeah, is yeah that's that my next no one question. Hangs, no one hangs out after the games anymore. You know, it's not. I mean, you got Jimmy. You remember we were partying. Every weekend. If yeah, I, weekend. I never partied before, Steve. I don't, yeah. I don't do those things. So. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, uh, but yeah, no, you know, the, the, and that jumps into my point with, that I wanted to ask you. is like the di- you touched a little bit on it now, the difference between that and now in softball. Outside of the team, but what do you, what do you think the difference is from when you started to now? What's the, the thing that's eye-opening most to you? The competitiveness. I think people don't. They're not as interested as when we first, when I first started playing. And maybe that's me because, you know, I'm getting a little older, yeah. but I couldn't wait to be out there for a whole weekend, man. And there was 300 people in line with me to do the same thing. Yeah. And maybe the parks have changed a little. Like playing in Genero was a blast for. You know, I know. I know. Berwyn was awesome for North South. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the Westchester League was great when we used to go to Hodgkins, you know, yep. play there. It's just. I don't know if it's more people are involved with families now, but I feel like they all had families then. They would just bring their kids out. So I don't, I really yeah. don't know how to fix it. You know, I guess it's just ups and downs of softball, but right. you still see people playing out there. Everyone's playing still. Right. They just don't care as much. That to me is the biggest thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to lose yeah. ever. I still don't want to lose. No, never do. And, and the the leagues have fell, fallen off tremendously. Yeah. I can definitely yeah. say that. Uh, just from the standpoint of people don't even want to show up, right. you know. And and I think that hurts the game. And, and I, like we've talked about on some previous shows, the commitment has now kind of gotten into some tournaments. And I think some of those major teams now are missing two and three of their main players, which you've never seen 15 years ago. Never. There so was that's deep on each team. Right. And that's something that, you know, that I think there's ways to fix it. We've said it probably a hundred times on the show, but I think there's other things that's also you got to look in the mirror, right? And, and if you're going to commit, you got to show up at the major level. And, and believe it or not, that dwindles down. You know, when the 45s started 20 years ago, they had their full team every single night, even in league play. And that forced other teams to show up and, and really – it makes a difference. When the major teams start showing up all the time and they have their full squad there all the time, and I understand work and, yeah. and other things. I get that. But those guys all worked 20 years ago. They yeah. made ways to show up, right? So I understand with social media now, people know more things. I get it. But it dwindles down once you start seeing those major teams show up all the time. And and when you look at this year's major teams, I think more of the major teams went to guys that show up more. Yeah. You know, they might have took less talent, but they show up more. And and I think that matters, you know, in the long run. Well, people want to – Look at Donnie. Want, Donnie got on signature. Yeah, I know. All right, all right. So People want I mean, I'm wanted to beat them. As much I'm as people every- say, that, you know, the 45s <laughs> ruined softball during that time, because people do say that, that yeah. they're a powerhouse team. 
but everyone wanted to beat them and they tried their hardest. So actually they probably did better for softball yeah. because yeah. kids were trying to beat them. And it was the, when you beat them, it was the best feeling in the world. Right. But look at the 45 team now. What's one of their main, one of their main issues? No, Commitment. Yeah. Right. Think about it. What is Flash's right. main issue when they're in the season? Commitment. Right. Hey. They, when they hey. struggle, their and guys don't care. show up. Yeah, and not caring, well, which goes, you know, it goes with commitment. It goes with it, right? I mean, you know, and, and that's part of why the major game, I think, is taking a step back. Last year, our Hex team, our major issue was commitment. You know, we had guys all over the field because we're trying to fill holes, which, you know, when you're not, when you're deep, but you're missing four or five guys every weekend, it's it's it makes a difference. You know, it, it does. And, and And the same thing goes, I mean, signature, I mean, I know that there's there's reasons why guys miss. I get it, but Signature played shorthanded in yep. several tournaments and leagues last year. Circus did the mm -hmm. same thing. Circus the same thing. Yep. So it's kind of like who has who has the better role players and what guys can play multiple positions better than other teams, right? You've got guys that need to play yep. outfield, used to it, and and Circus ended up having a couple guys that played really good in different positions and, and unusual spots. That's that's kind of what makes, I think, a, a good team really great if you've got a couple of role players that can step up and play some spots. Right. Yeah. Like, Jimmy had played center field against us last year when I was with Iron. Dude. <laughs> For one inning. We put the you know what else I see, too, is that uh, you'll be playing a game. Let's say it's, you know, Dynasty against the 45s, and our game's over. Our guys hop in the car. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a – let's say it's a tournament. People, Our guys hop in the car and they go home. You know, they got to go to work or whatever it is, deal with their kids. When, when I first came up, when I was playing center, I was watching every game. I wanted to know where every single person was, so I was in the right spot to at least try to make a play. Now, did I always make the play? Probably not. <laughs> but at least I was, like, in a position, like, I knew, okay, this guy loves to go left center. This guy likes right. to hit it on the line. And that's what me and Joey were so good out there, I thought, because Joey would hug the line when we knew someone was going to cut or maybe go big left center. And I would play in left center and say, hey, go ahead and hit right center. If you could do it. Right. No one stays around anymore and scouts anybody. Right. Right. I don't know. And it's, uh, it's hard. I would have never thought I was in this position where I'd be talking like this, but. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're right though. I mean, and honestly, I mean, to our point, it's, you got to look in the mirror and show up. I mean, that's yeah. really what it comes down to. So <clears throat> my next question for you, you know, Name the guy. I know you mentioned Joe Caputo. So outside of Joe, because you think you've already brought him up, but tell me how it was to play with some of the guys that you were the best players on your team. So name one guy that you felt was like just was kind of under the radar a little bit that no one really talked about, but you felt like he was an incredible player, I and mean, at the same time, he was an awesome dude off the field. When I was with Windy City, I would say Vince Crossan. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, Vince would cut in front of you you'd move in he'd cut in front of you again and he would just keep doing it and he would yeah. never go away from it and vince off the field they called him nightcap Vinny. like he was always the last one yeah. out <laughs> so i mean vince was vince was awesome right um, he, he was he was a good player and no one really gave him any credit because at that time there was a lot of good players on that team you know um for the one year that we won we had uh we had burger and filkins, filkins right, right. pitching for us and that's another guy, man. He was – for that whole year that I played with him, and I played with him in, like, side tournaments, like, with the How You Doing team and stuff like that back in the day. But Keith was one of the best teammates I ever played with. Yeah. He was – is for for how good he was, he was always trying to help somebody else. Yeah. So, I, I can't say anything bad about him. No, I agree with you there. I got to play with Keith uh, way back in the day uh, for one year or two, and he was – an awesome dude to just to kind of be around, but you just knew how good he was, and it was sickening to the point of how good he was. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it was it, like it he was really a catch with one hand, like it was nothing. Yeah, <laughs> well, he's got like gorilla hands. I yeah, mean, it's insane. I mean, him and Josh, I've seen catch more one-handed balls than anyone. Yeah, Josh has yeah. got big hands yeah. too. Yeah, no, yeah, Josh was a, a really good first baseman. He was. During your when he played, I mean, I haven't seen him play recently, but I'm sure he still can, can probably can he do play it. anymore. Huh? Can he play anymore? I, you know what? I, I heard he's been playing <laughs> on the south side, I believe, with Stretch and J Jake Jake and yeah. some of those guys. He's been playing um, out at 
on, I think, with those guys. I know he played a tournament on the south side with his shirt off the whole tournament. So he's <laughs> he's right. representing. Yeah. I mean, he's doing Josh things. Nothing changes with him. I right. saw him Hamlin. I saw him playing at Hamlin. No, so he'll play Hamlin yeah. every year. Yeah, he does, he does play Hamlin because yeah. he plays with uh, – what is that team that they put out there every year? I can't think Underage. of Underage. Underage, yeah. yeah. So – so right here, the Donnie, really quick, why don't you stop and uh, I know I, I just seen a ton of people jump on. Yeah. I think everyone wants to check out Steve's glasses, so they're jumping <laughs> on. Yeah. Joseph Austin, Tommy Corlett, Mel Hefner jumped on. Uh, William Deer, Tony Scriven is watching. Dave Butterfield says, hello from Arkansas. That's cool. Uh, Dylan Ryan commented back and said, we're the best. That's cool. Um, Scotty, Michael, Eric still blames me for not pulling him out of the tattoo parlor. <laughs> uh, Lee, Lee says, "Lee says we all know you got a tramp stamp. Don't lie, Steve." Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Peter Corral says, uh, "What's up, Uncle Jimmy and nephew Donnie?" Jack Nakanishi's watching. Um, if you have anyone that I missed, Jimmy, uh, Anthony uh, Starbucks on, Joseph Austin's on, Lane yep. Neiman's on, uh, my <laughs> wife's on. Wow, welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Max is on. Oh, that was Jack. Tommy Corbett's on. Look at that. She said even Jimmy's wife's on. See that? So she, she's just checking you out, Steven. That's fine, man. You could afford her. see the glasses. That's all right. It's probably the glasses. You're right. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. So, so we're, I'm at the part of the show right now where our, I know you have any more questions, but we've been doing this thing since Timmy's been on the show. We call it Rapid Fire. And – what I do is I give you a list of 10 people. I know you kind of know the list, but you kind of don't. You don't really know who's on the list. And uh, you just want to just give me a brief sentence or a brief comment about each one. The first, preferably the first thing that jumps in your head, even if it's like he's an asshole or a jagoff. That's the type of stuff that me and Donnie are looking for. Yeah. So, but if you want to add a nice comment and try to be nice now, because we're on camera, I understand. But either right. way, we'll see. are you ready to get started with rapid fire? Yeah. All right, my man. Number yep. 10, Sal Malazzo. A snake. <laughs> so, appreciate that. All right. No, Sal, Sal, was, Sal was great with me, man. Uh, I worked for Sal. Um, he, I, he was a pitcher for our team, and he's the one that brought me into major softball, so I can't, I can't really. But snake for sure. Awesome. <laughs> no, number nine, Pat Caputo. Oh, the best. I love Pat. Yeah. Uh, and he's done a lot for softball. Well, man he uh, has people don't realize he's been around for a long time and he's doing all this stuff you know for free <laughs> right, right. the game so uh, i'll never have anything bad to say about Patty. number eight the guy that left your team this year alanji five cool player i mean mikey mikey's the best third baseman I, i've ever seen and mm -hmm. and i didn't get to see philkins in his prime or burger you know yeah. those guys were but mikey Mikey plays all out all the time. Right, right. And a great Honestly, friend. Awesome. Number seven, your boy Spaghetti. Oh, Jesus. I know. He's, usually, he's probably taking a picture right now if I know how he is. Can I say this? Cunt. Right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Num That's number. We'll just leave it at that That's word. That's the first word. Cunt. Word on Perfect. That's the first time someone used the C word. Yeah, the boy. <laughs> number six, Daniel O'Connor. Oh, you threw this in here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Man, I love Danny O'Connor. He just – he didn't want to be there. And if he didn't play, he would throw a tantrum. And I, and I love Dan. I, I actually started off college baseball with Dan, with me and Garen. And uh, I, I went to high school with Dan. Uh, but he just – he just didn't have – he couldn't sit, you know. As good as he was playing or as bad as he was playing – if he was playing bad, he didn't understand that why he, you know, may sit a few games. Right. So, but it is what it is. Yep, I hear you. Number five, your boy Chris Guerin. I know you're close, so I had to put him on the list. Yeah, I mean, Chris is one of my best friends. Um, the guy hit absolute bombs when he first came up. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was games where he was hitting balls, and I've seen him hit baseballs that far. I've seen him hit 12 inches that far. I mean, Chris is just naturally strong. Anyway, I mean, Chris ain't that big of a guy compared to some of these other guys. No, Chris, Chris uh, when his, you know, when he was kind of beefing up a little bit, he he hit some of the hardest balls I think of 
He used to hit the ball. I, I used to say this all the time. When you guys said you and Holstein, I thought he hit the ball just as hard as Holstein, if not harder sometimes. Yeah, you're he, right. He literally, he pounded the shit out of it. So that leads me into number four, Mark Holstein. Marky was a great teammate, man. I loved playing with Marky. Uh, farthest balls I've ever seen hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I, I was, when I first came up, when I was with Twi- uh when I was with Windy City, he hit one to the fence at, at Westchester. And that's when the fences were 330. Yeah. And I caught it on a warning track, and it almost knocked the wind out of it. <laughs> yeah. I believe it. 100%. He used to hit him out of there Easy. sometimes, remember? Into the tennis yeah. court. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. So, yeah, dude, he had so much power. It was sick. So, number three, Rick, Ricky Gankars. Ricky was – Ricky was, I'd say, top three for me leadoff hitters I've ever seen. And it's crazy to, to think that, that that guy would be a leadoff hitter. He – but he could, when Mount Prospect days, he could hit it out or he could cut it in front of you. He was he unreal. Was, yeah, he was, he, uh, he was awesome. And he was fast as hell. So, so fucking fast. I know. He was quick. He kind of had our speed, Donnie, which was okay. incredible. Yeah, yeah that, that's I, tough to beat. Comparable. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, number two, I know we've talked about him. You mentioned him several times already. Our boy, Joey Caputo. Hard nose. Like I said, man, that guy would run through a brick wall, not only to catch a ball, but for his teammates, too. I've seen him go after his father before. Right. right. He wanted to right, catch right. him. It's crazy. But Joey had that competitive fire, man. He he, he was like everyone else during that time. He, he didn't want to lose. Right. He hated losing more than he liked winning. So, number one, who do you, you think is number – who do you think is number one on the list? I'll, Jeez, I don't even know how. I'll give you one guy. Oh. If I, uh, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Geo, but no, 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 it's, no, you're right. It's Timmy Kornikowski. So Timmy, Timmy's I, my roommate. Every time we go somewhere, yeah. he turns the air down to fucking ten degrees, ten degrees. and I want to kill him every time. <laughs> but I'll tell you this about Timmy, and it's the only person I've ever seen this in softball. Is that? Even as good of friends as we are, we've known each other for 15 years now. When that game is going on for that hour, yeah, we are not friends. Yeah, at all. He's yeah. that he wants to win. Oh yeah, he will not. Yeah. I've tried talking to him from second base, and he will not talk to me during a game. The minute the game's over, you go back to normal. Yeah, but that's yeah. how competitive he is. And he, yeah, he, he does not like fucking. No, losing. there's not many of us that do, Steve. No. I, mean, I don't like losing either. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, Donnie might, yeah, but Don- I, I don't. Donnie's okay with it. Yeah. It's not, yeah. not true. Different simply. generation. Simply not Different true. Breed. So <laughs> are you are you shocked that I didn't put Gio on our top ten? No. Okay, good. Yeah. Sure. I'm, sh- I'm sh- actually shocked you didn't put Jibs on there. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Since you brought <laughs> yeah, up. Make, make it 11. <laughs> we'll make it 11. Our boy Jibs. Terrible hair. <laughs> no. Jibs, uh, Jibs is kind of in the same boat as Sale with me. Um, while I was playing, Jibs always, you know, Jibs always has those side teams. He yeah. always, he always asked me to play, and I've been yeah. playing with Jibs probably longer than I've played with any other major team. Sure. So I had a lot of fun with Jibs over the year, including the moist years. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, last question I had for Stevie was if that you've played with a lot of different individuals, you know, through your career, who's somebody that you always kind of wanted to to play with that never got the, the chance to? Oh. oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, I would say two people probably. Uh, Ralphie Lawrence, and we're talking like major ball, right? Yep. Not on side yep. teams or anything. Yeah, I've, yeah I've just played with, yep. played with pretty much everyone. Yep. Um, I would say Ralphie, I would love to play with him, and Billy Smith. Well, I played with both of those guys, and I could say Ralphie is incredible. Incredible teammate, incredible dude. Um, Billy Smith's a piece of shit. I'm just kidding. Billy Smith's not a bad guy. He's uh, he's not bad. He's very quiet, Billy. He's just really to himself. Uh, Ralphie's more of the fire type, you know, fire you up. Billy's more to himself, but that doesn't mean he's not a competitor. Just I got to play with Billy the last two years in the first responder tournament at Hiawatha. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he's awesome. Yeah, no, he's the North a great dude to drink with. Huh? He's a North Sider. He is. He, he moved up north. He, You know, he just had a baby. So, 
I'm happy for him. He got married. You know, he's got a good job. So he's doing a lot of good things. So I'm really happy for him. So, but he, you know, that leads us back to the OBI days. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. So. You guys had a solid team. Yeah, we had a lot of, we had a lot of fun on that team. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> so if Donnie doesn't have any more questions for you, that leads me into my last question. And it's the question I ask every guest on the show is what would you change or what is something new that you would bring into softball to make the game better? <clears throat> I've seen your show, so I'm going to agree with you on this one. Cause I, I thought about this cause you, you know, you sent me a message yesterday saying you were going to ask that question. And I've seen it at the end of every episode, yep. a three day tournaments. I'm with you. Um, Sundays, with all the people working on Mondays, you don't get the crowds. I mean, Forest Park tournament, the championship doesn't have that many people anymore. It's crazy. Yep. When, we were, when we were playing, when we played in 2013, it was slammed out there for the track. I know. Yeah. 15 was insane, yeah. too. I mean, just it yeah. was crazy. Well, I mean, you guys, yeah, that was a, a run-in. Huh? So, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's been seven years. I, I mean, know. It's easy to believe that people just aren't as interested anymore and i and i don't think it's going to happen unless you guys you two make something happen just because of the money yeah it's it's there's not as much money to be made if you have a three-day tournament instead of a well, four-day tournament and unfortunately everything's about the money yeah no i i agree with you I, you know and I, and I and someone else brought that up to me but think about how much more money you would make on a saturday right because people are all staying around do you think you would make stuff for it though i don't know I think well, we're gonna have so, to test it out and find out. So, Someone's man, gotta you do, can't it. do it. You can't just do it once. You got to do it multiple times. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's something that we might have to try for a whole season. It's tough to play four days too, and and I know you're not really playing four days because you know one team plays on Thursday. But you want to go watch time. games. Yeah, but you want. So it's to really be out four days. And then, I mean, most of the tournaments you go out there on Thursday to watch the games. Right, and you get wasted. Yeah, you know, for the people that drink, unlike you, you know, you no. don't drink. Yeah, I don't drink. Yeah. Um. You get drunk and then you're trying to play on Friday. Then you got to play Saturday all day. Then you got to play Sunday all day if you make it. Yeah. Far, you know, mm-hmm. and if it rains, now you're pushing the whole thing back yeah. to probably another weekend where you could use Sunday as a rain day if you have to. Yeah. No, it makes sense. So I'm with you on that. I don't agree with you on much, but I agree with you on this one. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. <laughs> no problem. And, and by the way, you look handsome in those glasses now. <laughs> Thank you. So. But um, Steve, well so done. that leads us into you. What what questions do you have for Donnie and I before we, uh, oh, you know, before we let you go? Uh, um, what do you? How far are you guys going to go with this thing? Are you guys going to look to start announcing games, doing live streaming, or what? Are you going to take over? Good that? question. We are planning on streaming games from this channel for sure. Um, we're streaming a game tomorrow from this channel. We have a little scrimmage between Signature and Hex. Com- uh, Adam's coming out to do the game. Um, plan on. I'm keeping it going throughout the season. I think it'll be a little easier during softball season too, to kind of have guests that are, you know, playing and, and, you know, maybe some MVPs of tournaments and stuff. And even at the end of the year last year, we had every MVP of the tournament coming on and talking about the games. Um, we're going to, we're going to go pretty far with this thing. I think until me and Jimmy have our big falling out uh, after a, a, probably a hex signature game. And then that'll be the end of the show. That could be it. Yeah. That's, Still won't happen, but uh, <laughs> either way, no, I mean, to Donnie's point, I think, yeah, I mean, you know, we've been looking to continue to grow, right? I mean, and what I mean is, as much as we grow, the game grows. That's the way we look at it, right? So it's not really about Donnie and I, it's more about kind of growing the game, and that's why we did this. And that's why, really, we, why we started this is just really to get more awareness around you know, bringing some other cities in, like in two weeks, we're going to have the guy from San Diego who plays for Fo Show, who runs the team Fo Show um, out of San Diego. He's coming on the show to talk about West Coast softball mm-hmm. nice. and how they love our game and what they're trying to do to build it out out there. You know, we've had, um, you know, uh, let's turn it, Kelly on from Kansas City. You know, we've had people on from the East Coast. So, I mean, that's really our mission, Steve. Our mission is to kind of continue to grow the game and and really, you know, just bring some fun around it, right? I mean, and and this is something that I feel like when Donnie and I started this, softball didn't have this. And it was something that I think it's like now we have something to look forward to all winter. And and to Donnie's point, last year we started it towards the end of the the summer. 
on my personal page, we just started doing it before we created our own page. And we had all the MVPs on and, and people were kind of fun. And then, you know, you get that one night that Donnie and I, you know, are out like out till like 1 a.m. and we're having some cocktails and we might go live. Like and we give <laughs> and we give the fans an extra show. So well, it's about the and that's how that all started. Now, so you're good. This has been a uh, big, great episode. <laughs> yeah, this is this is our big one. Yeah, yeah, this is one that sets you guys above everyone. Else. <laughs> well, you know, you know, we're, you know, like I said, we're going to be looking for sponsors. I think when we open the new bar out in Shorewood, I'm going to create like a little stage area for us. Uh, we'll be able to have that, do that out there, you know, and basically. <clears throat> you know, kind of run with it from there and see what will happen. I mean, you know, there's no, we're not like looking to, I don't know. I, we never talked about like, what is the goal, I guess, to where's the end game at, if I mean, you know, I, our goal is just to continue to promote the game. I think that's what Donnie and I talk about the most. Yeah. I mean, look at the, when, I know the evil empire, but SSA and Geo, they didn't think they were going to have as many viewers as they did, and they blew up. So, I mean, yeah. you guys could do it. And yeah, the more, the better. Even if For they do sure. keep... No, we... And we... we Don, Donnie and I support the SSA. It's not like we don't. Um, we definitely support them. It's just, you know, here and there, we have different opinions, and that's okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of... We want to make the game better, and we talk about promoting their tournament at the end of the year all the time. We talk about improving you know, their tournaments all the time and doing things that they do. So, I mean, I hope they don't take that in a negative way just because we make jokes about certain things doesn't mean we think wrong of it. Sometimes I do, and we speak our opinion, and that's our opinion, you know. So you don't have to agree with us, and they, and most of the time they don't. So yeah, I mean, anyone that takes you seriously 100% of the time doesn't know you at all. So Right. Well, exactly. So, And, and Donnie, too. I mean, Donnie's – very outgoing and he, you know, he throws his jabs too. So, you know, and then that's why we're doing this too. It's a lot of fun, right? We have a lot of fun. We meet a lot of people and uh, continue to grow. So I, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. We appreciate you coming on, man. And um, I think that was probably Donnie, the best question we've that had. Was, huh? that was a really good question. I was not expecting. Uh, I'm just, I'm not expecting impressed, Steve. Thing. I got you guys. Steve's been I'm, watching doing his homework and thinks he was like, man, I got to think of a question that no one's asked. Yeah. Before. You should see my notepad. I had a bunch more of them. <laughs> an hour so. yeah so good for you my man i i like it so uh with that is there any other questions before we let you go steve no when uh when am i on again <laughs> <laughs> you you know what maybe we'll make you an every month guest we'll see all right, all right. anytime though I'll, I'll be happy to do it right, when you guys and i appreciate the time and uh i know donnie appreciates you too so thank you we truly Thanks, do boys. all right Please. steve thank you He was uh he's pretty entertaining. Jimmy, it got it got deep there for a second when he asked that question. Yeah. It was a it little got good, huh? It was good, yeah, that was a solid question. I, I like uh I like that kind of stuff. It makes you think, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, but it's it the honesty is I think the best part about it is the reason why we do this show is to grow the game and you know, and we're we're and I think we're doing an okay job of it with reaching out to other associations and other towns and yeah, uh, well, and trying to help. Like, I mean, if Rosmondo comes to the major nationals, that's how massive. much would that grow? Sixteen in softball. That's massive. That's massive. And, you know, I I got a. I'm gonna talk with Patty Caputo. I've already had one conversation with him about that. You know, and I don't think he understands how big they are. I don't think they get it. Yeah. You know, they. You know, when they post the video, they're getting a hundred and fifty thousand to two hundred thousand views. Oh, more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, the yeah. magnitude that's of, I'm, of their following yeah. is bigger than any team we'll have. Correct. And so, you know, can you imagine them doing that for our game? I mean, that's tremendous, yeah. right? So, and Brett um, Helmer has been incredible. You know, yeah. he's been awesome with us. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys in the 12-inch world have been incredible with us. So, it's it's really good to yep. see. So, yep. so, so right now I see – that Steve, our next guest, yep. uh, looks to have joined. Yep, why don't you go ahead and bring him on? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring him on. We're going to jump the business section out before we bring a fan on. We'll bring a fan on at the end, and we'll ask him a couple questions um, just to kind of just to stay to our, our, you know, our guts here. So Keep it light. Let me go ahead and bring, 
Let me bring Steve on really quick. Okay. So Sounds Steve, good. for the uh, viewers out there, he is the owner of our bar and grill out in Highland, Indiana. So I'm going to let him talk about his business. And mm -hmm. we're going to ask some questions because he was a part of the um, Eastsiders and a part of some of the older teams. So um, umpire, umpire Blue Lou, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for coming out to the Dome this past weekend. Appreciate it. Is there an umpire for tomorrow? Uh, we do. We have the same oh. individual. So uh, I don't know if you know who umpire Blue Lou is. He's out of Minnesota. He came out this past weekend. He was doing backflips all over our turf. Really? In the dome. Yeah, he, he's uh, a big, like, TikTok, uh, big TikTok sensation and, and basically Facebook person. He's got a ton, ton of, I gotta meet of this followers. Guy. I got to meet yeah, Blue, so, Blue. Yeah, he's, he's awesome, man. Um, so we, we were at the Dome over the weekend, and a lot of my staff was out there meeting him. We had a softball, girls softball tournament, and he was out oh, there. Cool. Yeah, he was out there trying, uh, umping the games and stuff. So he, he's got an incredible view to, to many things that he does. So I know. He, very unique. <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. So I heard a tremendous thing. Um, I, I could probably roll over. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> I would love to so see you. I, Ooh, how about this? How about this? If we, if Signature wins a seven inning, in the seven inning game, you have to post on our page your attempt at backflip. That ain't gonna happen. I'd be might as well just put me in the emergency room now. <laughs> you think you'll break your neck? Uh, I'd probably kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that would be, you know, the, that would be one hell of a clip for views, though. Uh, it, it it would be hundred percent. So I I'm actually trying to add Steve. I think he's having a little problem adding on. It's all right. Usually people do on their first try. I know you guys did a little test run, but I think that would be a very funny wager for tomorrow's game. Yep. So cartwheel. Well, we could do this for the seven inning or for the nine inning. Okay. All Which right. More? Seven. All right. The shirt will be this nine. All right. That's All right. cool. <laughs> so you're going to die if you lose, and I have to wear a shirt if if I lose. Yeah. <laughs> what What about you, though? That's it. I have to just wear oh, the shirt if we lose. got to wear the shirt. Yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no, like, cartwheel? <laughs> I'll break, break my neck. Oh, okay. Let me, I'll break. Let, me try to, let me try to get Steve on. I think he's having problems. <laughs> I'm not a nimble guy. You're not a nimble guy. <laughs> um. Um, I don't know if Steve's out there, but it, it seems to be it's not letting him add. I see him in the I see him to approve him in the video, okay. but it's not letting me add him. Now it's adding, but it doesn't show that he's. Does he have to accept it once I add him? Yeah. Yeah. So, Steve, you got to accept it with audio and video, just like you did earlier. I don't know if you want to jump on another Facebook page, but this one seems not to be allowing you to add, which. We haven't had a guest in a while having trouble, huh? We made it. It's it's actually simplified. It's like Facebook made it a little bit easier from when we first started. Yeah, yeah. So, which which is awesome. But I know he's out there. I see him. He mm -hmm. just, for some reason, I think he's got to hit a button or two. Maybe he's on the Wi-Fi. I would like Adam, Adam uh, Cumbie to actually, if he's on his computer, please join with your phone. Yeah. So we can add him on, too, because I'd like to add him on next to talk a little smack about what we're going to be doing tomorrow night. That'd be awesome. Adam would have a couple good opinions for you, for sure. You can give him a rapid fire, and he would he would let you have it. Oh, yeah. I would do a rapid fire for Adam if you'd like. Yeah, Marty said it's probably an Indiana thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, here he is. He just requested it again, so I know he's on. All right, uh, good. Stay close to your phone. We might need you at the end. Yeah. What was that? Uh, any guess this week will have a hard time filling the shoes of last week's random guess. Who? Why am I forgetting? Who was it? Oh, it was Russ Delude. <laughs> Russ Delude. Yeah. yeah. How do you forget <laughs> Russ Delude? Man, he's going to be upset with you. Yeah, I know he's going to be Well, you, you kind of you remembered it. Right. Remember right, it took, took me a second. Yeah, Steve figured it out earlier, but I don't know we for were... some reason. You know what it is, is maybe he, he's having trouble joining. Uh, maybe he didn't like the page under his own name. I don't know. That could be it. You gotta like the page. I know he liked, liked the page under somebody else's name earlier. So, well, Adam's now on his phone. I just saw that. So. Robbie, he, he 
He says he was sober, but there's no chance that Russ was sober during that. Um, while Steve's trying to figure it out, I'm going to bring uh, Adam right. on now as our random guest. All right. Let's see if uh, if it'll allow me to bring him on. I love that. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I can uh, I give a nice warm introduction if he does come on the show to Adam, if I may. Yeah, we're going to try to get him on really quick. Why Steve's out there trying to figure it out. It's all right. I try to. Steve, we appreciate you even trying. Yeah. Here he is. Look at you with the headset on and everything. What's up? What's up, What's up my man? Adam. Not a lot. You know, just watching the show. Just watched one of the best interviews of the year with Messina. No logins needed. It was great. <laughs> yeah. It was smooth. He was smoothly transitioned into the show. Yeah. Very smooth. So are you ready for, like, the biggest head-to-head -head matchup ever tomorrow? <laughs> oh, dude. Clash of the Titans, I am pumped. <laughs> nice. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know Adam, just because you've kind of come onto the scene as of recent, if I may say. Just kind of doing I'm a baby. I'm a fawn. I'm like Bambi. I've, still, I've got wobbly runs on ice still, yep. man. I'm... Your legs don't work as well as your, your brain does. Uh, you know, you, you just come onto the scene in the Forest Park world, um, doing some games, doing some streams. I had the, the privilege of doing No Glove Nationals with you this year. It was Honestly, one of the highlights of my of my year. Uh, I wouldn't have traded that for the world. So, uh, you do a nice job of setting that up in there and just making sure that everything looks great. So, I commend you for that. Before uh, before we start, Donnie, just thank you for doing that, by the way, because I know that was a big leap of faith for you. I know it caused a lot of commotion, but at the end of the day, like you guys were talking about before I came on, it's about growing the game. It's about making things bigger and better. And you know, for me, every game I try to make something a little bit better, and adding you definitely made things a lot better. I was watching a uh, game one of the finals, the No Glove Finals today, and because uh, I'm submitting it for a, uh, an award, and just listening back to it, I had so much fun. I was laughing my ass off. Yeah, dude, how awesome were those streams? Actually, Jimmy, I don't know if you caught that, but Adam is submitting uh, game one of No Glove Nationals Championship for an award. Really. I just saw uh, for IPRA, we, uh, Illinois Parks and Rec Association, we have our uh, annual conference at the end of January. So one of the categories is long form video and uh, what better than an hour long video of some dudes mashing some 16 inch softballs <laughs> in a scoreless game that goes into extra innings and ends up being a one nothing victory. So, yeah. you know, it was a, a game you have a call by my guy Donnie on play by play. Yeah. That was one of the probably craziest games I've watched in a long time. And I was there in person. So... No, that, that's awesome, man, and congrats on that. That's cool. And I know when you started uh, at Forest Park, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy, right? <laughs> guy I got that guy lot, man. I got that a lot. He doesn't know shit about softball, and he doesn't know <laughs> shit about any of the players. Um, but as, as time went on, you grew on me. And now that you're kind of starting to know a little bit about the game, you know, I kind of like it a little bit so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that at you so well i will say you know brian evans green socks that was my first thing that got me truly got me shit from the softball community because i didn't have a roster yet so right. i was like oh green socks is up to bat because i was just trying to pick something uh, and everyone's like who did he's got a name who the hell i'm like i got i, I don't even know man i just came up here it's my first day <laughs> right 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 that's awesome so uh really quick i know steve i see that i think you're out there if you're out there steve please request to join the show still uh we still want to add you for the business section of our show hopefully you can hear me uh and please send another invite because i sent one out to the name that you jumped on earlier and i believe you declined so uh, or it got declined so i don't know I, I don't think he declined i think it just ran its course and then said he couldn't connect yeah. so it was still, um, still he's he's still still here He's like, all right, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably, he's like, he's all pissed off. <laughs> brought on Adam now. So hopefully Steve is going to be able to join. I'm hoping, like, that somebody that knows him on the show could text him on the side um, to see if he can join the feed. I know, I know it's a little difficult. When you clicked, when I sent you the invite, Adam, did it come up and just say click with audio and video? Yeah, just uh... – uh, had me click to join and then everything started so yeah so i don't know maybe he's having trouble with his internet maybe he's on wi-fi he's gotta get off his wi-fi who knows so but you know adam uh, we have a big game tomorrow and i know you're going to be announcing that game i know you're pumped about it how many hits do you think donnie will get tomorrow what is the over under let's put an over under on preface up uh, how many i got last time well what'd you get three three yeah i feel like the 
usually when I call Donnie games, the hits aren't abundant. So uh, I feel like I don't know if he's trying to impress the cameras or what's going on there. But uh, usually when I do a Donnie game, we've got some big plans. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's a, a ground out and an error. And then he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. So I'll tell you a quick story. OK, so we were playing with Iron last year and uh, we were playing line drive. And it was in the Forest Park playoffs. And line drive hadn't won a game yet the whole year. They were literally winless. And Adam and I were like, yeah, if, you know, if, if we end up taking a lead in like the third or fourth inning, let's let's put a mic on me and we'll we'll be mic'd up during the game. And we thought it was a grand idea in, in in hindsight, fantastic idea, right? We didn't we didn't lead that game for a single inning. <laughs> they beat us in their first win of the year. They went crazy and, and I was like, Adam, I can't I can't go live. We're not winning. This will be so yeah, I you not. Donnie Donnie walks past the booth and he just looks up at me and just really like suddenly goes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but we so, had this all planned out. Yeah. So we actually ended up trying that in the Dells. Yeah. Uh, we had Donnie mic'd up for a game, and he was absolutely terrible. He popped out. No. Uh, dropped the ball at first, threw the ball away. So he, he awesome. was incredible. Two just lies. <laughs> lies. I did fly out. Uh, you popped out, and you threw the ball away at third. That was – Well, the guy missed was, it, right? I think he missed it. That was a 250-foot fly ball. Okay, that no, was no. – no, it was like a pop up, I think, to <laughs> second base. But the ball you threw from first to third, the guy missed it, I think. That was that was away. Danny. He didn't catch it. Yeah. I guess so. To your credit. But before we bring on um, Steve, because he's in our chat now, I just seen him pop in. So, really quick, Adam, I want to ask you a question and um, see what your opinion is on it. So, this coming up year, you're going to be announcing games, obviously, for Forest Park. You're going to be doing that. Do you guys, I mean, do you, do you personally look to expand out, maybe go out and announce other parks and maybe help out? And if we can make the SSA with us all one when it comes to this live streaming, would that be something that you'd be interested in? Or is it something that you just only want to do at Force Park? Or do you yeah, have I mean, a contract? Me, I don't know. Me personally, well, I work for the park district, so that's kind of kind of our thing right there, and that's right. one of the things I was brought on board to do. So, um, so as far as like the park district, I know that we kind of like to be Switzerland, just because there's a whole lot of stuff going on in the softball world, and yeah, you know, we we, we like our little slice of pie. But me personally, obviously, like tomorrow, you yeah. know, I think it's a great thing for the game, and the, the best thing for Forest Park is that if the game is growing elsewhere, and if we have broadcasts from other places and put eyeballs on it and right. talk about the tournaments and everything else. So, you know, I think there's that fine line of it, but for, well, you know, for me, I'm, I'm in line with you guys. You know, whatever we can do to kind of make it cool again, make it, you know, fun. I, I love that you have a bunch of different ideas to just kind of freshen things up a little bit because the it's not the game that's broken. It's kind of everything that goes along with it. And you talk about the four-day weekends and guys are tired and the Saturday nights yeah. and... So, you know, I, I think that's cool to kind of showcase that stuff in the way that we do with the live streams. And now that we have so many different looks at it with the different styles and everything else, I think that's really, really cool. Well, my, my goal, uh, and it might not happen this summer, but it might happen this summer, I don't know, is to get sponsors um, for our live streams and basically to allow you guys to go to parks. Um, you know, I'll join you when I can, of course, and live stream – whether it be the best game, even if Geo's out there, we can have multiple live streams. It doesn't have to be one live stream. We're not competing against each other, right? So the thing is, is the more people that watch live streams, the more the game grows. And if we can get people to do that, like sponsor us, and maybe, you know, we, you guys can make some money as you go around park to park and, and, and the gas and, and basically cover your guys' expenses, um, I, I don't think anyone would have a problem with that because I think a lot of people love – to do that, yeah, and to Angela's point, live stream the, the A League at Forest Park. That type of stuff is awesome. Like, we can literally promote the A level and down um, or even and promote some of the major teams because, you know, a lot of times it's only the major games that are seen, which I understand people want to watch the best, but that's my goal, right? And, and I, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I've had people reach out already for sponsors. And, I mean, it might not even cost us a ton of money because, I mean, how many games are you going to do over the course of a summer, you know, and we could figure something out like that. But I think that would be pretty cool, right? If, and To your point, Adam, if you know you're driving out to, I don't know, Westchester or you're driving out to Kennedy Park, you know, at 
least we're going to cover your gas and you're going to make, put a little money in your pocket to do it. And I'm not saying you even asked for that, but I just think it's only fair, right? And we can drive more, more through our broadcasting and use that sponsor money to cover those type of things where now someone is, it's more, it means more, right? So uh, what's your thought on that before I uh, kind of let you go? Well, I think that's kind of the challenge too, is, you know, you, you put the option for live streaming out there. So that kind of gives people the option to not have to come there and be at the park and everything else. So you, you talk about that, but then that's where, you know, the live stream being fun and focusing on the atmosphere. I don't know how many times during no gloves, Donnie and I took in between innings to just talk about the smell of the food or mm -hmm. the sights and sounds going around, you know, the, the swimming pool. And you've got people right. asking questions. And like, for me as a marketing person at a park district, that's a great tool. So I'll not only promote what's going on at the tournament, but then like, hey, come in for some games, go to the pool, get the best damn soft serve you can get while you come out and it's 95 degrees and we're all, you know, melting and dying, but we'd, we'd sure. rather be nowhere else. And, you know, then I've got people sitting in left field watching the games while they're there and, you know, correcting me on names and having some fun. Oh, I saw this over here. And it's like, that's cool. Right. That's what I love because then you create something that they want to be a part of it in more than one way. So, you know, yeah. obviously, like you said, exposure is the best way to do it. And right now, especially, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid thirties and younger than me, it's a lot of things are digital. So if you can have that thing digitally to kind of hook them, you know, I love someone from Brazil who's like, what the hell am I watching when they hop on a random Twitch screen, right. Twitch screen right. and Donnie right. and I are explaining the game to them. Me, who does who just learned the game, Jimmy, of course, explaining to someone in Brazil about 16-inch softball. So it, it's well, just yeah, really I mean, cool like that. And I love the fact that we're trying to do more, you know, all around. And like the A-League games, like if people want to jump on, like Donnie did a solo broadcast during No Gloves, I'd be more than happy to do more stuff. Um, you know, just obviously being the one man crew over at Forest Park, it's a little difficult, but Donnie coming on allowed me to do a lot more things I've wanted to do um, to make the broadcast better. So it's, it's cool like that too, that we're all, you know, we're all going to help each other make things better. Yeah. I'll have to be the sideline interviewer during the games too. That's, <laughs> that's going to be, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the sideline view from the dugout, you know, the, in between the third inning, what you're telling your team. So. That's like, hey, I'll I, see. I, I, I can hook up up to 10, uh, 10 cell phones on a, a Forest Park broadcast so we can get you guys from both dugouts. We can do, we oh, can yeah. have a lot of fun with it. And that's, you know, that's what I love about it. You know, you want to do an interview for the show up yep. in the booth after a Wednesday game? Come on up. Let's, you know. Yep, absolutely. So, we have so, a lot of capabilities, well, man. Adam, I know you're going to be live streaming tomorrow night, man. I appreciate you jumping on really quick. I know Steve's in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and bring him on now. But, dude, I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, shoot Donnie and I your call tomorrow, just because the entrance way is on County Line Road, so Weird. don't listen to your math quest. You're going to get lost. See, you'll see signs out there now. We got signs out there that are lit up. So, I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. Bye, Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. All right, bud. All right, we're going to go ahead and bring Steve on. I know he's out there, so he's under my. Mike Gray, I just sent him the invite, so hopefully he figures this out and he accepts it, right? I will so, always watch the Cumby posts. Oh, uh, the Cumby, uh, and there he is. There, he, look at dude. <laughs> well, he can, figured it out. What kind of are you running? Here? <laughs> I told you earlier on the phone. I'm hungover, and it's my birthday. It's ten o'clock. I'm sitting here playing with my phone. Marty saying it's an Indiana thing. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Sorry. How are you? See you. Steve, <laughs> meet, meet my cousin Donnie. Hi, cousin Donnie. Hi, nice Hi to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, man. Thank you for making the so Are you his cousin or is he your uncle? Uh, he's, he's, well, it's a little bit of both. It's kind of a weird relationship, <laughs> yeah. Make... Steve, you got him confused, Steve. Don't I mean, confuse him, though. I was right? a little confused but myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, Steve, I appreciate you finally figuring out how to hit the accept button on your phone, man. I, that's awesome to you. <laughs> So well, it, it, Marty Dozen. We had Marty it earlier, Dozen. and then I, I don't know. It's, I'm not very, uh, he, I don't he, know much. I'm, I'm not even on Facebook. I'm still on my phone. Marty said shockingly he's late. <laughs> yeah, but I never so, missed a game time. The, Donnie, so the, um, just so you know, Steve and I go way back. But Steve was one of the individuals who used to show up right at game time with his shoes but, and get right in there and play. But I was always there. I never missed the first thing. I was always there for the start of the game. But to his point, he does drive 45 minutes every game that he yep. plays. Yeah, I had a little bit longer of a drive than everybody else. Yeah. That is true. That is true. And he would always be out late with, with your uncle, too. So yeah. that's always a good thing. 
Steve, I did a lot of that. Yes, sir. Where, where are you? Uh, where are you from? What part of Indiana? Well, I'm not from Indiana. I'm a transplant. I'm from the southeast side of Chicago. Oh, okay. About as far southeast as you can get, where all the steel mills are. Okay. Where the Skyway runs up on the. I don't know if you're familiar. Right there in the lakefront, but I moved out to Indiana probably about 25 years ago. Um, from our our area it was a general pro general progression for most of us to move out to Northwest Indiana, which is pretty much like a suburb of Chicago. I mean, I can be in Chicago from my house in 20 minutes. So yeah, okay. <clears throat> so Steve, I, I you know I know a lot of people in softball. Some of the older people that are rubbing around the game know who you are and know that our bar was a huge supporter of softball and still is in the local area, but a huge supporter of the SSA during the COVID days when we were having tournaments at Highland. I know you were sponsoring a handful of teams. People were going in your bar all the time. So I wanted to say thank you for that. That was obviously awesome. But we wanted to bring you on too before we get into the softball talk. And talk a little bit about your business. I know I see the R bar jersey right there or the, or the over, what do you want to call it, the fleece? Full over. Yeah. yeah, your dress that you're wearing. And, uh, Tell us a little bit about our bar, why you started, you know, what's your thought process, where you're going with it, how's it doing? Give us the background. Uh, well, we've been there a little over eight years now. Actually, it was an old bar I used to hang out at, and um, I knew it was for sale. And my other buddy who actually had a um, uh, bar and grill um, on the east side, the southeast side where we're from, he was like, hey, you know, we should buy this bar. It's, you know, for sale, you know. So one thing led to another. I was never in the bar business before he was. One thing led to another. We bought it, and then we ended up gutting the whole place, putting in the kitchen, remodeling it, expanded a few times. Um, so we're pretty much maxed out. I think we're at about 4,700 square feet. So it's good size, kind of perfect for what we do. Um, I would consider us a sports bar. We got about 40 TVs. Two big screens, um, so we got TVs everywhere. It's a great place to come watch a game. Um, and, but our food is the big thing, you know, typical bar food, wings, wraps, uh, burgers, all which are excellent. And then we have, uh, I'm a Serbian and Croatian, so we have, my partner Serbian, we have a part of our menu that's ethnic food um, from the old Yugoslavia, which were Serbia and right. Croatia was once a part of. So. We have a little portion of our menu with that, which is Chevops, which most people know, a lot of people know about. Um, so that kind of makes us unique to the area. There's really nobody else that does that. So, you know, besides your typical bar food, the uh, the ethnic, uh, as we call it, our Euro, Euro part of our menu uh, is a big draw for us and, um, you know, makes us unique in the area. So Nice. And I know, Donnie, I know, I know you don't know this, but Donnie, Steve actually does a weekly bar show uh he's done it for a long time and i would like for all our guests to go on the our bar and grill page and like them i know uh dave butterfield just put your yes. bar name and everything on there i know i tagged you in the post yeah. so yeah you know i i thank you for pointing that out i do it every tuesday morning and um after all that i was starting to think i think you stole my you got this idea for me right what you're doing yeah, now that, that's, well you're my dad so i follow my dad and i figured idea for me anyway it's just messing with you but yeah i do every tuesday morning it's not as long as yours of course it's anywhere from four to six minutes long i just kind of go over what's going on um during the week at the bar um right. we have music live music on the weekends i'll say who the bands are we do bar bingo trivia so just a lot of mumbo jumbo uh, talking about what's going on i call it the arbor weekly preview so but, yeah, yeah no and i love i love the out. idea for the bar uh i know you always put on their specials I know that you do, you know, what you got going on. It's something that I am going to probably steal it from Papa Magoo's. I know it's something that you know, like, I like. I'll let you do it. It's a, a, I give you the, the right to well, do it. I just, I, so, Donnie, I call Steve my dad. So, okay. uh, we have Uncle well, Dave. I haven't seen you in a while. It's, you're kind of starting to catch up to me. I think you can maybe call me. I'll be the son. you be the dad for a while. Oh. You're still looking good, though. Hey, yeah, you're still looking good. Dude, I'm looking handsome, and I just got a little haircut. Yeah, I, I mean, the hair's all still there. Noticed. I didn't say you weren't so, looking handsome. It's yeah. a little older nowadays. That's okay. <laughs> so, I know me and Uncle Dave, for those that don't know, Uncle Dave is Dave Bradle, and we usually take a ride to our bar 
once, maybe twice yeah. a year. So our, our ride is coming. I'll say it's been a while. So, yeah, we look forward to that. Or we have to golf one of these days. I know you, Maddie, and uh, Brad will golf. One of these days we got to play. I yeah, that's true. The game's going downhill, though. It's well, Maddie's. yeah. It's, Maddie tied me last time. He shot an 89. So he was wow. still pumped. Yeah, so he was pumped. But, which, uh, uh, which three no, I think that was the last. It, it was honestly the best I've ever seen Maddie shoot in his life. He was mm -hmm. incredible. And I, I think it was the last round we played this year. And now you had an 89 also? Yeah. We, I think we tied. Which, which yeah. three part four, three part four did you think? Uh, I, you know what? It was it was a course that uh, those money line guys took us out to. So I have no idea. I was just a, a lucky guest that day. So <laughs> I got to drive the golf cart around. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Steve, I'm you know. just, uh, just just kind of getting to know you a little bit more, and just kind of tying this back to softball. You know, Jimmy was telling me before we started that you you know sponsor a lot of teams, and then I think in the COVID years, if I'm not mistaken, you were really kind of helping out with with some teams that you know were looking forward to some sponsors, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, your love for the game. What what makes it so easy for you to say yes to help teams out? Well, you know. We, we did do it a few, just a few times, and I was, of course, happy to do it during that, that first year of COVID. And I think I sponsored a few of the teams that played in the tournament out in Highland. But unfortunately, in in my area, it's all 12 inch, so there's really not much 16 going around. So, so I'll sponsor a lot of a couple of the 12 inch teams. But um, what Jimmy was referring to was that 20 or 21? 20. Jimmy, that, I, think I mean, I know I know COVID was 20, but did that? The tournaments, yeah, that was 20, yeah. I think it was 20. That's when I started the new game in your bar. I, I took the wheel, and we made our own. We were betting on the yeah. colors. I don't know if you remember yeah. that day. Yeah, you were messing with it. I didn't appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's what happens. But, um, when, when you're the sun, you can do sometimes what you want, which sometimes but yeah, just goes so, that way. You know, I mean, anything to help, obviously, if 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 I have, is in a different location, obviously, in Illinois, I would do a lot more, of course, but um, yeah, out here it's mostly 12 inch, unfortunately. Yeah, and so for some of those people, before we jump into the softball talk, Steve, because I know I have a lot and I'm going to keep you a little longer than most. Mm -hmm. uh, our bar is only about a 35 to 40 minute, maybe a 35 minute ride uh, from, if I were to give a local location, I would just say Harlem and I don't know, maybe like 294 and 55, it's probably about a 35 minute ride, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, for example, when I used to play, play out in Westchester, probably, yeah, if traffic's good, I could get, I'd get there in 30 minutes, 35 minutes. When it's good, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, when it's good, I mean, yeah, so it, it's not as far, I'm, I'm pretty much right over the Illinois-Indiana border, right. off of 8094, so right. it's, it's literally, Five minutes off the expressway, so right. Yeah, so, so it's not so to kind of lead us right into softball. Uh, well, we got a question for you really quick. When is your golf outing this year, Steve? That's from Mickey Blush. Oh, oh, Mickey. Yeah, Mickey played in our first one, I think, and then um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he backed out one year, and then it's basically full every year. I have a waiting list. Um, but Mickey, to answer your question, I, it's either this third week of august or the fourth week it's always either the third saturday or fourth saturday in august okay so. and, then, and then we have your boy maddie so steve played on a, some really good teams and this kind of leads us right into the the softball talk in the 90s and 2000s so tell us a little bit about your softball career because i know a lot of people probably the newer people that play the game today probably don't really know who you are to, to the point just because you haven't played at the major level in some years um, yeah. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background with softball in the 90s and 2000s. I know the East Siders was a huge Southside team that I was lucky enough to play on with uh, Todd. Yeah. You know, if you don't mention Todd, he's going to fall off his chair. So yeah, here's, that's here's uh, your opportunity. Old coach Todd Marabelli. Yep. The uh, king of the park tournaments, as uh, people like to call him. I started out actually, I was 50, about 15 years old when I started, but like to actually, it was mostly at local park. Um, first team that I would say a known team, competitive team, was Dago Park, um, which they're actually, I believe, are going to be on the uh, 2024 ballot for the Hall of Fame team entry. Um, oh, nice. so I, I know they're trying. 
So I okay. started out with them early on, um, then played with the East Siders with Todd and uh, uh, his team for quite a long time. And then, you know, I was with Boom and I think, or is it you? You were on the Avalanche with me, right? Yeah, we were on Avalanche together, which we had a really nice squad. We were. Yeah, we, we, had, we had a lot of talent. Yeah. I don't, a lot I don't, of talent on the edge squad. I don't want to cut um, you off. I'll be right back, Jimmy. I got I to gotta hop off for just a sec. I'll be right back. All right, perfect. Go ahead, keep going. Sorry. Am I boring him? Yeah, I guess you were boring him. You, you, that's the first time you've, I've ever lost Uncle or Cousin Donnie. I guess I'm boring. Okay. Yeah. So back to that. Yeah. So, yeah, Dago Park Eastsiders. And then, well, actually, Maddie, Maddie had a team called the Snappers that was probably only maybe together for a couple, two, three years. Yeah. That's when I think I really started going all over the place, you yeah. know, besides outside the neighborhood. Uh, I think we played in um, – Mickey, I think, had a league at uh, Clyde. Well, you I think we played in. Rogers, um, you were on Rogers Roofing with us. I, yeah, Rogers Roofing. That's right. That was like a year or two, and then Cardinal Fitness. But I don't. I think you might have left. No, I wasn't. Cardinal Fitness. I think Cardinal Fitness was after Rogers Roofing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a couple years after. Yeah. Yeah, that was when Marty thought it was a great idea to buy gyms, right? (laughs) No comment. I have no idea. (laughs) No comment. Yeah, yeah. So, but no. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty much pretty much my career. I probably haven't played in in about five years. So. Yeah, but I know that you were around the game. You know a lot of the players, and especially on the East Siders. I mean, we used to come out to those. I mean, I was the young kid then. I was in my probably early twenties, handsome, just like I am now, and uh, basically would play with a lot of the you know major guys. I know there's a, a picture floating around Facebook right now. Just it sometimes pops up on my feed, and it's like Eddie Chibi Burger, me, you. Uh, Bradle, uh, you know, I, I forget who else is on there, but there's a bunch of major softball players that are <laughs> were very good players yeah. on that team. And I think we we used to go out to the south side and and hey man, we yeah we were a loaded team, but we always didn't win the thing. I yeah, mean, we wanted yeah. more than we lost, but we didn't always win it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, what what tournament are you talking? Were you talking about like the Firecracker Fourth of July or? Uh... Yeah, I mean, for, we used to play Firecracker or Bucks for Burn back Bucks then. For burn. Remember that wasn't? Yeah. Bucks you know, for Burn was always a good tournament, yeah. Well, Donnie, had a, maybe he got a call from his wife, Steve. So he, no. he didn't think you were boring. He just had a. No, it wasn't It wasn't you thing. It was a me thing. I was about to uh, have an incident with the uh, bathroom. Oh. That he just... <laughs> so what, what he's telling you, Steve, is that you're full of shit. <laughs> I've, been called, no, 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 I've, been, I've been called worse. Okay. That's Could have been okay. an at the Rollins residence. So, so, so Steve, uh, you know, we, we, Donnie, while you were off, we were talking about softball, yeah. some of the teams you used to play on. So I know you had a question for him about softball back then. Um, why don't you get into yeah. that question? Yeah, I don't know if you asked this. It was just kind of like what you notice. I don't know how, you know, attached you are to kind of the, the major game now. You probably kind of watch from the outside when you can't make it around. But, you know, playing back then and some of those big-time teams – how do they compare to what you see now in the game? What's what's the biggest takeaway from kind of the then to now in the, in the softball world? Well, yeah, I mean, really, I haven't been around it in, in a good five years, so yeah. it, it'd be hard to make the comparison. I, I guess further back, I think guys stayed together on, on teams longer. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, guys jumping around and – I know it's a thing. It was the last five years when I played. Um, I think earlier on in my career, it was more of, um, you know, sticking around with, the, with, with whoever you were playing with um, and, and adding pieces here and there. Um, now it seems like there's a you know, new team every every year and guys jumping around and, you know, it, you know to each his own, of course, but – that would be something I, I would say I noticed, you know, yep. from the day. I think you're spot yeah. on. I mean, Jimmy probably attested this too. Guys do kind of move around more than than they used to. I mean, we see on the team I play for, we brought in a couple new guys. Jimmy's team is almost entirely new from last year other than a couple guys here and there. But it uh, it definitely is more prevalent now that people are moving around for sure. Yeah, You could thank LeBron James for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also think that um, people are – more spread out now to where they live. Yeah. You know, back in the day, you played 
local park you played in that area and you you went to play some tournaments uh you were from the south side or the north side or for certain areas but now people are you know they're moving further and further away to further suburbs so i'm sure that factors in also you know keeping core core group of guys together that maybe you grew up with or yeah played a lot with i i think that's that's a, a, a big part of that that's that's yep. really that's nobody's great, fault that's a great point steve because when I started playing, I know there was like three leagues right by my house. I mean, you had Minuteman, you had Wentworth, mm -hmm. you had all these good little park leagues. You had Berwyn, you had Cicero. I mean, you had all these little park leagues within 10 minutes of my house. Yeah. Nowadays, I, you know, I know Wentworth, I think, I don't even think they have a men's league anymore on Monday and Wednesday. Minuteman, I, I couldn't tell you if they do. Um, Berwyn, but you know, guys move. I get that, but like in my area where I live now, like I don't. There's no 16 and softball yeah. league. You know? Yeah. And so that's right. a great point. When you used to go 6:45, 8 o'clock, 9:15, and play three games in one night. Yeah. yeah. We used to do that all the time. Yeah. That's, I remember those days jumping around. Yeah. Yeah. That's so not. Well, I mean, uh, just, just just out here and from the southeast side, south side, um, and there used to be Blue Island. Yeah. You'd go play the 9:30 game at. Centennial or Hart Park, that's no longer. Yeah. Cal City used to have, Cal City used to have a really good league. Memorial Park, the Whips used to play out there, the East Siders. A yeah. bunch, of, bunch of good teams. That's no longer the only one. That that the last time I played is Man Park over in, in Hegwish portion of Chicago, far southeast side again. That's the only league in, in my area that I know is still going on. Yeah. But there used to be three, four. So the reasoning for that, who knows, but I think – People moving and you know moving out further and further away it probably has a lot to do with that. Yep. So we have a, a comment, Donnie. I don't know if you want to read the comment from Mickey. I don't know if you see it. If not, I can do it. But about yeah, I see it. Go ahead. Let's see. We got uh, is that Dago Dago Park or yeah. Dago Park? Dago tough, Park. Mm -hmm. Dago Park. Tough team played them in uh, 1986 Blue Island Championship with Crush. Fortunately, we run. We won five to four in the seventh inning. Steve's good buddy, Big Frank Kaminsky, got winning hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard a lot of stories about Frank, and actually, I played some games with Mickey on Crush. I got a couple Crush T-shirts upstairs in my closet yeah. still. Always, always. The, I didn't play for Mickey much, but the, the few times I did, I always enjoyed it. I'm sure everybody says the same thing about him. But uh, yeah, I was yeah. probably too young. I don't think I was part of that game, Mick. I was probably a junior in high school still. Okay. Matty Dozen said you need to make your debut in the uh, 50 and over Nationals in 2024. Yeah. yeah, he's been trying to get me out there for a while on that. I'll tell you a quick story. The last time I played was with Matty was in, in Highland when they had the, um, the, the – during COVID, when we had the tournament out here. And um, it wasn't the national. It was, it was a big – it was a money tournament. So Matty's like, yeah, come on and play. I'm like – Man, I haven't played in a couple of years. I'm like, all right, I'll play. So he's uh, he sticks me at first base. Now, my whole career for 35 years, I played nothing but outfield, either left or center. I thought I always had good hands. I thought I was a pretty good defensive outfielder. So Manny sticks me at first. I'm thinking, great. I got I'm gonna run around the outfield. I'm probably was 51, whatever. So never played first base before. Man, I respect that position. I had <laughs> blood blisters on my head. I mean, everybody knows how hard the ball is in the first couple innings. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I never knew it was that hard. I, my hands were, were swollen. It was unbelievable. How some of those guys do it and make it look easy, or, you know, your Izzy, Izzy or Sanchez, who's smooth as could be, probably still playing first, and there's a bunch of other guys. It was unbelievable. And then I had Maddie's son playing short on top of it. Yeah. The dude had a chance. <laughs> and actually, the, the very first play, very first batter, I'm sure Maddie remembers this. Squibber to the pitcher, I go up the line, throw up the line, I get plowed over on the very first play. My first time back for like three years, I'm laying down in the dirt. I'm like, what am I doing? But but it was fun. I got I got my share of hits, and uh, I think we played about four games in six hours, and I couldn't walk for like four or five days, but it was fun. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Actually, I think we were one of the teams that played you. I remember you. That's first. right. You beat us two to one. That was the COVID was year. Yeah. Who were you with? I don't even remember. We were with Lose One. Yeah, that's which it. is all the guys we we played. We went out there with Lose One, and it was like me, Timmy Petras, right. and a lot of the guys from kind of like the Lawlers area right. little crew. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. And I think yeah, yeah we you were. I think you were 0 for three. I came 0 for four. I think I had a couple <laughs> of hits. 
<laughs> we know, know that's a lie, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. but then, yeah, I, I do miss it. Um, I miss the camaraderie, obviously. Playing, I miss that. I don't miss the traveling. You know, it gets, uh, you know, you get uh, busy with the bar and stuff like that. It's just got to be too much, yeah. you know, jumping around. But but I definitely, definitely miss it, probably the camaraderie of it more than anything. So, so. so other than me as your son, uh, is there any, any other kids? Line? You, are you done with the kids area, or are we trying to have babies, or what are we doing, Steve? Oh, 55, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Double nipples well, today. Today is really my birthday. I know. You Happy birthday. birthday. Hey, that's Thank what you. I wanted to tell you, Don. This is the first person we've ever had on yeah. the first birthday. That's on your birthday, see, I set some time up beside and I just sit in my basement for a half hour <laughs> waiting for you. Well, happy birthday. Thank you for coming Thank on you. the show. And I love the fact, I don't know if, Donnie, I'm going to take you to our bar. It's actually, Steve's right. It's a really good little place. And I, I'm shocked he didn't match, mention what is in the back What is in the back uh, patio of the bar. Oh, our bocce court. Yeah. That's right. You were, you were playing. You had a, the day you guys were all there. Yeah, you had a big bocce oh. game. Yeah, oh. I have a, it's a makeshift court. It's not very big. Um, but it serves a purpose. I have a league during the year, 12-team league. We play on Monday and Wednesdays. You know, just the reason to go out, have some fun, and have some drinks, of course. Yep. So, yeah, so. we can play. We can have a big game of boxing when you show up. Yes, we will. Me and Co so, uh, Cousin Donnie versus you and Bradle. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. I'll have to buy Bradle some vodkas first, though, before we start so that we can, yeah. we can see straight. So... But, uh, Steve, I appreciate – well, you know what, Donnie, do you have any other questions for Steve? That's it. That's it, Steve. I, uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, I was able to come on. Congratulations to Marty making a Hall of Fame this year. I wanted to say that. Yep. Marty Dozen. And obviously I know Maddie's watching. And yep. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So before we let you go, though, I wanted to ask you, do you have any questions for Donnie and I? No, actually, the question I, was, I asked earlier, you the uncle or is he the cousin? Or, it's kind of confusing. But it's a weird, it's a weird dynamic. Yeah, it, it is. Just don't question it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it when you come on by over a couple of Tito's and waters. Right. And yeah. burgers, right. Just, uh, I, I'm the uncle for everyone else, and he's cousin yeah. Donnie. So. Yeah. All right. All right. That's, that, that's my only question. That's, all right, my bad. That's all, yeah. Uh, Bradle, all right, before guys. we go, Bradle said done, an absolute vodka. <laughs> vodka. <laughs> for sure, for so that's, sure. So that's your Uncle Dave for you. So, <laughs> Steve, it was a pleasure seeing you, man. Oh, you will see us at our bar once again, guys. Like I said, I just want to promote the business. Steve's a big promoter of softball. So thank well, you again for that. Well, and it was a pleasure thanks for having us. me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Cousin Donnie, nice meeting you. And Jimmy, we'll talk soon. I hopefully we'll see you guys soon. For sure, yeah. and we're gonna uh, we're gonna share you on our page. You'll be on our page supporting the R Bar, and uh, hopefully you do the same, buddy. Appreciate right. it. For sure. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. Take care. Well, I know tonight's show is a little longer, but I think we've had a lot yeah. of awesome things. Yeah, man. We've had incredible conversations. I know it's probably our longest show that we've had, but yeah. we had the little hiccup with Steve trying to get on, but that's okay. He made up for it. He did. He was he was he was lights out on the show. He was fantastic. Yeah. So uh, that being said, man, tomorrow night I think we'll we'll probably kick off our game with a little comment on the live stream, and then we'll hand <laughs> it over to our boy Adam. So yeah, that sounds like a blast to me, man. I look forward to tomorrow and look forward to seeing the guys and. Uh, yeah, like and share their page. We'll be posting videos on YouTube for people that want to watch them or just kind of listen to them. Um, we appreciate all the support tonight. We had a lot of people watching and commenting, which is awesome. Yep. Uh, anything else, Jimmy? You? Uh... No, I, I think you hit the nail right on the head. I just a matter of let's make sure we continue to share the page. Um, follow us on YouTube. I know that we've also started, um, well, I mean, I don't know if you started yet, but we're, we're going to start a TikTok. So. <laughs> <laughs> let's get on that this week so we can get the TikTok right. started and then we'll look eventually at some point to when we go live to live stream us all over all these sites so yep. I'm looking for the software on that I've done some homework as of late and uh, it's going to be incredible yeah, yeah J-Rob it's going to be Adam's going to be commentating tomorrow night's game so on the live stream so I don't know if you saw his comment but just want to answer that and Drew yes go Hex so um, but yeah, that being said, hey man, appreciate it. Happy New Year, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Yes, sir, we'll see you.
Thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you next yes, week. Thank you.